so we must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, and the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. I will take Lotus's body with me and leave this room. We'll begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. I rather enjoyed playing with you. Goodbye. Junpei could see Ace's finger tighten. He could see it begin to squeeze down in the trigger. His body tensed, preparing for the catastrophic impact of the hot light against human flesh. Then it happened. Snake stood up. What? No, that's impossible. For the first time, it's his composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward, one step closer to Ace, then another. He looked after he looked for all the world, like a zombie. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. His voice was the mournful wailing of the undead. Stay stay away from me. Get back. Stop. If you come any closer, I'll I'll get get away from me. Little by little, Ace was retreating. Snake didn't stop. He counted his stiff, inex inex inexorable, inexorable approach. His eyes twin pools of fury. Listen to me. I said, don't come any closer. Shit. You bastard. Ace's revolver leapt five times. Five times in the air in the incinerator was split by the crack of a bullet. Snake's body twitched as five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. A fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. Snake made a strange sort of choking cough. And then his strength was gone. His legs crumbled and his broken, battered body slid it to the floor. Incineration will begin in three minutes. But Snake wasn't quite done. Even as the pool of blood beneath him grew, he began to move. He half crawled, crawled, half slid toward Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's, Ace's leg, and the other gripped his tight uh, his thigh with strength that should have been long gone. Son of a bitch, you, you're a monster! Get off of me! Let go! Damn you! He kicked at Snake with his free leg, driving his foot into Snake's face, his arm, his shoulder, it made no difference. Also, I don't know how Snake can be grabbing him, considering one of his arms is fake? Well, no, you can, um, uh, those, they had those prosthetic arms at work now that you can grab stuff with. I mean, I guess I understand, it's just, like, I still cannot understand, because if to uh, put it in a mild way, how can he have his arm... Like, I, I don't understand how it works for him to have slid the bracelet off and still have a properly grabbing arm thing. You understand? He's using... Oh, wait. I guess it's, he crunched it, but he didn't crunch the joint parts of it mm. so that he, it can still flex and do stuff like a normal head. It's just a little deformed. Yeah, I guess that's I my guess that makes that's sense. my only thing I can say to actually prove it. Yeah, I can't say anything else about it because that's his left hand, right? Yeah. Which technically looks fine in that picture. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's the artist flaw. That's the artist flaw. So. Yeah, Snake refused to release him. Once a snake has ensnared its prey, rarely does it release it. Ugh, this is it, Ace. We're going to burn to death together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. Ah, damn it. Damn you. Get off. Let me go, you monster. Okay, okay, okay. Look, think about it this way. My company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. You're not wounded too seriously. I'm sure they can fix you easily. You don't have to die. You can be saved. Just let me go. <laughs> Pathetic. Begging for your life? Se then Seven and Lotus began to speak. 
Junpei could hear tears in their voices, and their words were strained. Snake, that's enough. You can stop now. Yes, he's right, Snake. You've done enough. Come on, Snake, let's go. Let's get out of here. You have to come with us. We have to leave together. Snake turned toward them. He coughed and blood splattered across the floor. Then he smiled, a set sort of smile. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up. Be quiet. You're not seriously wounded. You only have six bullet holes. I couldn't save Clover. My sister died because of me. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Spread idea was it to start up the incinerator. Uh, it's just... I don't know. Perhaps in the afterlife she can forgive me? Now, go. Go now. You have to go. Zero's... Yeah, actually. Scenario will begin in one minute. Damn it, shit! We're out of time. We have to go. Seven ran toward the exit. Lotus followed him. But Junpei... Junpei couldn't move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks of where his tears had washed the blood away. He was broken, body and soul, and Junpei felt as though half of his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried desperately to swallow to clear the lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now. Junpei's chest tightened, pulled, taunt by anger, misery, and cold feeling of emptiness. Poor Snack. Poor Snack. Go, leave me alone, and ace behind. And Santa and June. Pure, oh, I didn't read that line. Pure emotion surged through his heart, alongside the torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller and taller. And then it broke, crashing down with thunderous force into his shaken, unprepared mind. Sneak! Sneak! Jinpei's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and he launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. Wait! Don't be an idiot, Junpei! He felt a hand grab him from behind. It was seven. Before he had time to react, the larger man had pinned Junpei's arms to his sides and was hauling him, him bodily back toward the door. No! No! I have to help Snake! 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 Get off of me! Let me go! Scenario will begin in 10 seconds. Ugh. Ugh. Seven. Six. Damn it, I don't I don't got a choice, kid. Don't blame me for all for this, alright? Fuck, I almost forgot how ugly Jinpei is, right? Ugh. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Uh, one, zero. Yeah, Junpei is quite ugly. Like even in the box art, you can see he's quite ugly. Gates two and three are locked down. Beginning incineration. Junpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach, and then his legs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up in the same motion and leapt through the door. It slammed shut behind them. Junpei would struggle to sh shaky feet. He glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Junpei ran to the door. There was a small window cut into it. Give me a second, actually. Junpei's... Uh, Junpei's five. Lotus is eight. Hmm? And seven. And then six. 5 plus 7 is 12, 8 and 6 is 14, and that is 26, plus 6, it would be 32. Nope, no way in hell they could do that. There was a small window cut into it. Inside he could see Ace and Snake. Shit! Damn you all! Why? Why? Why me? I don't deserve this! Answer me! 
Answer me, Zero. Why? Why? Zero. Zero. And Snake was gone for like the majority of the game, but his sacrifice is super good. His ending is fantastic. Zero. Ooh, and that is a super nice face. Yep. Burn you lolly killer. Agreed. He didn't know how much time passed. He didn't know how long he stood there in front of the incinerator. He looked to the side. Lotus's face was ashen. And if not for the hands she'd put against the wall, Junpei didn't think she could have stood. Seven looked old and tired and used. His eyes stared at the floor, seeing nothing. Junpei said, Nothing. He simply began to walk toward the open door. The hallway did come down earlier. Hey. Wait, Junpei. Where are you going? He blinked when their voices broke the silence. He stopped. You stay here. I'll go get Santa and June. You're gonna bring them here? How? Don't worry about that. Just stay here and wait. Alright? He began to walk again. He looked over his shoulder and watched Seven and Lotus grow smaller and smaller. They stared back, not moving. He wasn't sure if they could. He turned around again. He knew where he was going. When they walked through the hallway earlier, he noticed an elevator at the end of the side hallway. If it still worked, then maybe... Before long, Junpei found himself in front of the elevator. Next to the door was a button with a triangle in it. He pushed it, then the door opened. Jesus, for how long have I been streaming today? Uh, I've only been here for three hours, so... And you've only been in this call for three hours, so that's around six-ish? Five-ish? Hours? Yeah. Wow, Jinpei was in the large hospital room. June. Santa. He kept calling and walked to the center of the room. But try as he might, he couldn't find them. Ugh, damn it! Where did they go? Increasingly frustrated and increasingly worried, Junpei left the large hospital room. He had no choice. He would have to look for them. Junpei's heart was heavy. Six and a half hours, I think. Jesus. He couldn't shake the feeling, but there was a part of him that felt it would be wrong to, even if he could. With every step he took, his legs felt more and more like lead. I need to have dinner, or like food soon, because if it's six and a half, I probably only uh, have had food in three hours ago-ish? We're almost done. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm not worried about ending it right now. I do want to get to the end of this ending, I guess, you know? Before going to bed. Anyway. And on Monday, we get the true ending, which we've seen most of, so I think I can skip to... Where could I skip to? You have to follow the whole coffin ending again. Yeah, I guess I could just skip to the part where I end the coughing ending. Basically. The last room, I mean, of the coughing ending. The yeah. last puzzle I could. So while everyone's coming in, I could just uh, Even solve that puzzle. Even if that whole party. Oh? As soon as you get to that, whole, that last puzzle, and you solve that last part, and then you just fast forward through all that. Yeah. I was and just thinking... Just get to it. <laughs> Bless your heart for powering through this. I can. I'm thinking that maybe I could just, like... Fast forward until the last room puzzle, and then in the last, in that puzzle, I can just do it in stream while waiting for people to come here to join yeah. the stream. Because that I'm gonna work. be fast forwarding anyway, you know? Yeah. So that I can, I can at least be doing something for it. Does that sound good for you guys too in the stream? Something later, Junpei found himself at the chapel. He stepped inside, expecting to find nothing. But there, on the red carpet in the center of the room... June! No, codenames didn't matter any longer. She was Connie. Connie! 
Jinpei cried her name and ran.